such a classic venue on the calendar. You know, you gotta be a real all-round rider to do well in finale. <laughs> Clinching the world title in 2014 here for myself and then Richie the two years after. So it's always been like a happy place that has good memories for us. Finale, host an enduro event from 2008, and we never skip a date until today. So from cross country to the 24 hour, to the enduro, to free ride, uh, all the way to the World Cup that we're all seeing in a few days. This is a pretty rad place and there's everything you can dream of. You have the beach, you have the good lifestyle, you get the food, which is an extremely important component for us Italians. And you have all the mountains behind you. My name is Francesco Gozio, and I'm tackling the challenge of becoming race director for two World Cups in the Finale do region. My first race director role is going to be pretty tough. It's pretty big. First of all, I have big shoes to fill. Describing Ricky, he's like the guy I go asking for uh, points of view and help and, you know, and he's always there when I need that. What do you want to know about Francesco? <laughs> How many coffees we drink? <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> My name is uh, Ricardo Negro and uh, from 15 years I was the race director of the Finale Enduro and the Enduro World Series here in Finale. Designing a course is a challenge from different perspective. My aim was always to show to the riders the best way to have a bike journey in our venue. And Francesco, compared to me, is a really talented rider. And he really was able to understand where the race mountain biking were going on. And especially in the last year where e-mountain biking came really heavily. And so working with him, we could make a perfect combination of the two aim for me the right new race director for the new era of enduro could be only francesco for finale we are facing three world cups eedr so e-bike enduro world cup enduro world cup and marathon the course design is pretty pretty key the cool thing though is that i have the chance of showcasing what we have to offer and the best we have to offer Long trails are always key for us. The higher up, you find the longest trails. So that would be the idea of just getting two very long stages in this area. It was based on old hiking trail that was used to carry snow from this area in the old days all the way down. So it's a bit of a tribute to history as well. We are very lucky that we have a huge variety of trails and we can choose a different course every year. Yeah, we're just checking this trail at the moment. Seems pretty rowdy, but it looks really, really good now. A lot of gravel to work on. There's gonna be some work to be done, but feels pretty good. The variety is amazing. You can start from beechwood up in the forest, so long routes, fast and flowy, because the terrain allows it. And then the lower you get, the rougher and more technical they get. Trail builders work on them. Most of the times they took lines that were existing before, recleaned them and modified a small amount of things. If we think about Fulvio, who was one of the first trail builders in Finale, his example is always like, he's been a snowboarder and surfer, so flow is what he's looking for and he's a master of it. And then every single trail builders has a different style and they bring this style to the trail. This would be like perfect way to end the race because 
You know, you've got a big day up, high up in the hills right there, and then you touch the Ranzi area, and then you finish down here. It's like a proper journey from the top all the way down to the coast, and Pietra is, is finishing down there, so this would be the best stage. It's good on one side to have a race in which it's a staple, so that's the course of Finale. But what we want to do is take it a step further, which is Finale has something new to offer every single year, whether it's Pietra, Spotorno, every single part of the region. We always have something new to offer. This is the Piastra. Uh, we're working on the on the marathon course today. I need to check with uh, Ricky and Enrico what they think about uh, inserting a trail that was included in the EWS in the past years. <laughs> you know, we are really good uh, finding trails, but we are not really good finding coffee. There we is! Calmo, calmo! Salvoglio, Varganano, Tanga! Enrico Guala is the Pope, pretty much. We always joke about it, he is the Pope of Enduro. Long history in racing, long history in the biking industry, but eventually, very similar to Ricky, uh, he's a friend. I mean, to understand the finale of the region, you should think about a ski resort or a ski area where multiple resorts are connected. So each one developer his own skiing riding area, and then the finale of the region kind of embrace everything. When we're going in Spotorno on the Maucrest, it was already part of our vision back in the 90s. Uh, let's not forget we, we shot Crank 2 uh, in 1999. And then we raced EWS there. And with the evolution of bikes, uh, we believe it's, it's also good to uh, race marathon uh, up there. This would be the idea. Single track after a pretty steep climb, so quite rough. But this is what I had in mind. It's like, it's good to challenge the riders. We're talking mountain biking here. Well, actually this trail is kind of a quintessence of the riding. You know, it's the Riviera, it's challenging, it's rough, the beautiful view. And I believe this is gonna elevate World Cup to the next level. No doubt, Francesco. This is real mountain biking and is what this year have to be about. Let's give it a try, guys. For every single discipline, what we want to do is not only moving towards the direction that the sport is following. See, we are working very much towards having a very like proper mountain biking marathon course in which we have single tracks and which is challenging, there is variety. And we are lucky that we have this in here. In 30 years, we've been through cross country and then free ride and then enduro. And now the fourth element is e-biking. The EEDR course has been evolved in three years because the sport is still young. And what you're going to see this year, and it's going to be a big surprise, is a completely new design of the Power Sages. I think a power stage should be like the best expression of how the e-bike can push the potential and the, the skills of rider, you know. In this case, it doesn't have to rely on the torque of an engine, but on the skills that a rider has. So this area here, like the possibility of different lines that we have, it means that there's not going to be only one only line uphill with technical bits and, uh, and tight corners and like linking those sections together. Quick at changing, working on skills, changing gears, using the right amount of torque and support from the e-bike. All the connection of these components, we, we find it pretty much here. We have so much e-bike in specific that is developing, so why not using the e-bike World Cup to create and push something that can then be used in the future for our local tourism, but mainly to set Finale de Region as the best destination to do so many different disciplines as a proper mountain bike mecca.
relief. First thing, <laughs> the fact that the race is finished. Whatever the result, it means that they've had a good, tough day on the hill, and that's definitely rewarding. And that's definitely been, I've been able to close finale, which is pretty good. After the frantic times of the race, uh, it's finally time to chill. And I'm very happy to go out on something that was not race related and showcase the guys from Yeti team. The work's been done on men's DH for a perfect end of this adventure. Are we here with Ryan and Mick? I think you've seen them before. Oh. Yeah, course design was, wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to hear it. Yeah. It's perfect. It's yeah. good. <laughs> There's a new format of power stage and that was really good. It was more the style that I'd like to see, kind of like trials set up. My first ever uh, EEDR, so it was definitely a shock to the system a little bit, but um, we know Finale Outdoor Region is renowned for their incredible trails and this was no exception. So this time in Pietro and we got a taste of everything, some, some big high country and long stages and some short, gnarly, rocky, deadly, dusty stuff. So all in all, I was pumped. Best thing about e-bike filming? You get to ride back up without burning the legs. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pretty big double down there. I've seen one person doing it. They were sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I'll be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm not can food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on share mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got I remember the last time I was here, it was just scoured straight down the middle and they're done. <laughs> it was hard on the arm, that's for sure. Uh, skidding around and stuff. And down to men is always down to men. Mm. But eventually, you know, we're trying to make it more sustainable because mm -hmm. as soon as water gets in this, it just ends up at the bottom. It'll always be lined with screaming Italian fans. Absolutely. <laughs> Hearing the feedbacks from the athletes, constructive, uh, positive, sometimes negative, it all gives a good lesson to us to make better the next years. But it's a great measure of joy and pride to have it like happening. It's amazing. I'm very, very proud of Francesco. He's become a friend. We have a lot of fun, but at the same time, he's one of the most professional guys I've ever uh, encountered in my I would say long career on organizing events and the commitment to anything he approaches um, can make him reach big, big, big goals. <laughs> what do you want to know about Francesco? <laughs>